Hey guys, before we start this long-awaited episode of Awful OCs, I have an announcement to make. Later today, I'm going to be doing a charity Dungeons & Dragons stream. Yeah, that's right. For everybody who's been following me on Twitter and Instagram, this isn't much of a surprise, as on my break, I got way into D&D. Here's all my little art of my little characters and whatnot. So naturally, when I was invited to do a D&D stream for charity, I decided, hey, that sounds like fun. The charity we're doing this for is called Artist Relief Tree. This is an organization dedicated to helping artists who have been affected by COVID-19 and the quarantine and all that horrible, horrible stuff. Any and all proceeds made on the stream, including any ad revenue after the stream is over and I leave it up on the channel, is going to be donated directly to the cause. There's also going to be a couple other little uh, little bits, including the fact that everybody on the stream is going to be drunk. It's going to be drunk D&D, well, except for me. I don't drink, so I'm going to be the only sober person on the entire thing. Uh, and also, I'm going to be showing a lot of fan art on stream that I've collected over the years on YouTube that I either haven't been able to put in videos or probably won't be able to. So maybe your guys' fan art will end up on the stream. You can only find out if you tune in. We're going to have a bunch of fun rewards. We're just going to we're just going to have a good old time. So I really want you guys to stick around. But when is this stream going to be, you ask? Well, that's going to be around 4.30 Pacific Standard Time, four and a half hours after this video goes up. If you don't want to pay attention to what time it is on your laptop or your phone, well, then you can just turn on notifications for the channel. I really hope to see you guys there. It's definitely going to be a good time. And uh, with that announcement out of the way, let's get on to the real video. What is up, everybody? It's Mad Libs, and that's right, everybody. It is finally after eight months, I think? Jesus. Uh, it's time for another episode of Awful OCs, the series where I go over all my terrible OCs for my terrible old comic, Code Red. Like I said, it's been, I think, eight or nine months since the last one. It's been almost a year, I know that. God, I feel like every time I start an episode of Awful OCs, I always start off by saying that it's been at least five months since the last one. I really gotta do these more often because you guys really like them, or you have been lately. I've been getting a lot more comments on them than I usually do. Anyways, today we're gonna be doing another wonderful episode of Awful OCs, which was actually picked by you guys. I did a poll in my Discord server, <coughs> link in the description, and it's only available for an hour, so click it fast. <coughs> and the winner was loud and clear. Today, we're going to be talking about my old OC known as Beckham, the double agent hacker detective person who was a result of my obsession with Sherlock. Uh, no, not that one. You see, I actually have this thing called, uh, Taste? Yeah, there we go. That one. The best rendition of Sherlock that everybody loved. And the second movie was so great, I didn't absolutely hate it and zone out halfway through it. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., best Sherlock. Anyways, we're going to spend this episode like we usually do, going over this awful character's character creation, their traits, their backstory, their current story in the old comic. And I've actually added a new category, which is their relationships to other characters, because as the relationship map that I made for this old comic has proved, there is a lot to talk about there. So let's get started. Now before I actually get into the story part of this episode, I have a bit of an interesting story about the creation of this character. The interesting story is that I actually made this character non-binary completely on accident. I didn't even know what non-binary identities were when this character was created. I think I was about 15 and I hadn't learned about that kind of thing yet. So like I said, I was going through a Sherlock phase when I was about 15 years old. And one day in the middle of class, instead of paying attention like I probably should have been doing, I decided to draw something totally Sherlock related. I got out my pencil, I got out my lined paper, and I just fucking went to town. I went nuts. I went all out, dude. I did like line art. I made a background. I tried shading. I tried doing details in the background and I made this whole thing. I created this character just off the top of my brain, off of the vibes I got, you know, those detective vibes. I did all that. I made the drawing and then I was finally done and I looked at it and I was like, whoa, dude, I'm so proud of this. This is such a cool character. This, uh, fuck. I didn't think of a gender for this person. I was just going so goddamn fast. I was fast in the furiousing that fucking piece of lined paper and I never came up with a gender or character or name. The only thing I came up with were vibes. So I knew literally nothing about this character. So I decided to ask some people about it. I asked a few friends and I asked some family and there were actually some pretty interesting results from that. I noticed that almost everybody in my family who was older said that this person was clearly a boy. 
but almost everybody that I went to school with or family who were around my age said that they really couldn't tell. So because of that, I decided to just leave their gender completely undecided. Now, I will be completely honest here. At first, the idea of their gender being unknown was originally going to be like a bit for the series. It was going to be a running thing that nobody knew if Beckham was a man or a woman and the audience wouldn't know either and it wouldn't be decided. It wasn't intended to necessarily be a joke, but it was just sort of a mystery that would keep going throughout the series. I understand now, now that I actually am educated on non-binary identities, that that's not the best way to go about handling it and I am very embarrassed that that's how I handled it at first. But again, at the time, I had no idea that non-binary identities were even a thing. So my thought process on this at first was, well, you know, clearly this person's a man or a woman. That's how things work, right? So that's fine. You know, I just have to keep this mystery thing, but you know, I should probably decide what they actually are so that there can be like a big reveal. And I tried to do that. I tried to decide if the character was really, really in big fucking air quotes, a man or a woman. And I thought about it, and I kept switching between man and woman, and I realized that neither of those labels really fit the character that I made. So in the end, after a while of deciding and thinking, I just said, fuck it, man, woman, neither of those work. So this person is neither, and that's just how it is. And that's the story of how I accidentally created a non-binary character before I even knew what being non-binary was. <laughs> And now that we've got that part out of the way, because I thought it was a pretty interesting story, let's get on to Beckham's actual character, backstory, and all of that, that juicy stuff. Starting off with their character. Now, Beckham is a pretty easy character to describe. They were a super smart detective type hacker person who smoked cigarettes, beat people up, and never got caught by anyone. They were just too smart and too cool for any of that, and nothing ever really went wrong for them. And even if they did, they got out of it pretty easily because they were just too dang smart. Basically, they were a Mary Sue version of Sherlock. Kind of like the BBC version. Yep, that's right. This is the episode where I dunk on BBC Sherlock because it was a trash show with a Mary Sue protagonist and it wasn't even fun to watch and I will die on that hill. I'm getting heated. Anyway, other than those things, they had one other defining character trait. They were really, really fucking greedy. A huge part of their character is that they had loyalty to no one and nothing if money was put in front of them. They'd betray everybody if it meant getting a bigger paycheck. So they were also pretty lonely because, you know, contrary to popular belief, betraying people for cold hard cash doesn't really make you many friends. Oh, and one more thing about them that I actually really liked working with when I wrote this was that Beckham was also completely mute. They don't ever speak, and now I never actually decided if that was a medical thing or if they were a selective mute. I just remember that they never spoke in the entirety of the series. If I remember correctly, there was actually a scene I tried to write where Beckham was going to get tortured, probably because they fucked somebody over, and the person doing it made a comment along the lines of, I guess we're going to find out if you can really talk or not. And then I never made it past that part. That sentence is where the scene ended, <laughs> because I didn't actually decide if they had the ability to speak and just chose not to use it. I think the reason that I put this as part of their character was because at this point in the writing process, writing process, I just wrote it in my head for like four years. That's not a writing process. I'm getting off topic. At this point in the writing process, I wanted Code Red to end up being an animated series. So I think my angle was that I wanted Beckham to be silent to further their androgyny because I didn't want them to have a distinctly male or female voice. And I was too fucking dumb to think of the fact that somebody can have a voice that isn't distinctly male or female or the fucking fact that your voice doesn't determine your gender. I, I was just stupid all around. I feel like this series is very, very good evidence of that. But anyway, those concepts were just way too big brain for 15 year old Libby, so I just got rid of their voice altogether. So Beckham never spoke, and they only ever communicated in exasperated sighs, sarcastic eyebrow raises, and long dramatic drags of their cigarette. Because for some reason, despite being entirely mute, they never learned sign language or any alternative form of communication in their entire goddamn lives. They never even wrote shit down on like a notepad or something. I feel like I thought like that gets rid of the cool factor, like they were just so silent and cool and like they didn't even need to talk because they're just, they're just so cool, even though that's not how it works. I feel like you're gonna need 
to know how to have a conversation with somebody if you don't speak verbally. Like, how are you gonna fucking order at McDonald's when you go through the drive-thru? You can't point on the menu because they can't see you. How are you gonna go to the doctors and get your prescription? Like, if you're not even gonna write something down for the person to see. Like, there's so many situations where refusing to learn any form of communication is gonna cause issues for you. Like, I don't... I don't know why I did that. It wasn't because I didn't think of it, because I had another character who was mute for a while due to having her throat slit, because I was also an idiot who thought that if you cut somebody's neck, you're gonna hit their goddamn vocal cords, and she used a whiteboard and a pen to talk to people. Hey, it's Editing Libby, uh, here to tell you another stupid thing about this. I'm sure that all of you were wondering, hey, if these two characters were completely mute, maybe they spoke sign language. No, they didn't. Neither of them knew sign language, and it wasn't, once again, because I didn't think of it, because there was another character outside of them who could speak, who knew fluent sign language, and it was Vincent. This fucking guy knew sign language completely fluently, and these two characters who would have been the only characters who actually needed to know sign language because they couldn't speak, or maybe one of them could and they just chose not to, didn't know it. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that because it is so goddamn ridiculous and I don't know how that slipped past me. Okay, back to the regular video. You know, maybe Beckham could talk, but they just didn't feel like it because they fucking hated everyone. I mean, understandable, honestly. And, uh, honestly, that's pretty much all their character traits except for one, which is that they smoked. All the time. No, this isn't a joke. Every single drawing I ever drew of them, they are smoking. I don't think they ever put the fucking thing down. It could be the same cigarette for all I know. I mean, I never drew them lighting another one or throwing the other one away. I think the only time I drew them without a cigarette is when they were holding a gun. Editing libs here again. I've done some digging, and I have found a second drawing of them where they're not smoking a cigarette, and it's because they're in a pool, and the only reason this drawing exists is because I was making fun of the fact that they were also supposed to be very, very short. I think they were maybe like 4'10", 4, 4'11". 4, All I remember is that they're the shortest character in the whole series that isn't a child. Now that I've shown you my findings, I return back to my room to be tired and edit this maybe like a few hours before it actually comes out to you guys. Okay, bye. All right, uh, that's Beckham's character. And now that you guys know that, let's move on to the backstory, which is none. Okay, you guys like the backstory? Cool, let's move on to the current story. Now, I could tell you Beckham's story in the comics, or... I could show you this edited clip from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top. So Allow me to elaborate a little bit. Now, we already know that Beckham was a super detective hacker person who loved money. And what do you do when you're a super detective hacker person who loves money? Well, you get paid to hack and detect. But wait, who's going to pay for something like that? That's not legal. You'd have to find somebody who legality doesn't matter to. So obviously, that points to one thing and one thing only government-funded law enforcement. And also criminals, I guess, but mostly government-funded law enforcement. And in my story, there was one giant government-funded law enforcement agency with super-secret spy boys, which the story was actually focused on because Beckham is technically a very small side character. This agency was, and, uh, I have to fucking say it again, goddammit. WPC, the World Protection Corporation. Fuck, I hate saying that. I thought it would get easier after eight goddamn months, but I guess it's just going to be hard for me to say for the rest of my life. So yeah, Beckham's place in the story is that they were a hacker who got hired by WPC to do stuff that, legally speaking, they weren't really supposed to be doing. They were always hired kind of off the books, if you know what I mean. Like when WPC is filing their federal tax, the money that they paid Beckham is labeled under accounting or gardening expenses or something like that. It was basically a suicide, suicide squad, squad type situation. They would pay Beckham to do super secret, super illegal stuff, but they would pretend that they didn't do it so that if Beckham ever got caught, they wouldn't be blamed for it. So it could basically end up like, whoa, I can't believe this person, they were what? They were hacking and detecting your secret files? That's... 
You know what? It's a good thing you called us, WPC. We'll totally handle this. You know, we should probably confiscate those uh, USB drives that they took. Yeah, we'll totally take that, uh, and you can just take them into custody, take them to jail, give them a fucking electric chair, I don't care. Uh, we'll just take these USBs, okay, bye! Like, they would just probably throw Beckham under the bus if they ever got caught. And take the flash drives, because that was the only thing I ever wrote Beckham doing, is getting flash drives, because that's what hackers do. They break into buildings and they get flash drives, dude. Beckham had so many fucking flash drives and that was that was their job was just moving flash drives from place to place i mean they were also hired by petty criminals rival drug dealers secret organizations that kind of things but wpc really paid the big bucks because they really weren't supposed to be doing what they hired beckham to do but you know they really wanted to so they would pay more for that beckham was a jack of all trades honestly who only had one side and one side only and that side was called getting paid and that's all they cared about mostly because they were greedy but also because they had a son to take care of yeah that's right bet you weren't expecting that were you they had a small son named teddy who i think was like five years old in the series i think and uh, that's it. That was Beckham's whole family. They didn't have a wife, a husband, a partner, and it was never really addressed if they ever had one. I know that the kid was supposed to be biologically Beckham's, but I never wrote how. I never created a partner for them, either in the series or part of a backstory. I just know that they had a kid and they made a lot of money also for the kid, but mostly because they just really liked money. Now we're gonna move on to the new section of Awful OCs, which I've never included before. This is the first time and we'll see how it goes, which is their relationships with other characters in the series. Now, most of the characters were actually pretty neutral towards Beckham, at least the good guys of the story were. And that's probably because I never got around to writing their interactions with the other characters. Like, they never went on a spy mission together. I think they were supposed to, I just never did. Probably because Beckham works alone, because they're a lone wolf who trusts nobody. Don't get too close to them, or you'll cut yourself on their edge. <laughs> Not even Vincent, the leader of WPC, in, you know, that region, the world at least, who hired them, had any particular feelings towards their existence one way or another. They're basically just a contractor he hired when he needed to do stuff he wasn't technically or legally supposed to be doing. The only good guys who had strong feelings were two of the main characters, Bruce, formerly known as Butch, but I'm not calling him that because it's a stupid name, and Mark. They were actually the only characters who cared about and actively tried to figure out what Beckham's gender was back when I had that be some kind of mystery or whatever because, again, I didn't know about non-binary identities. And, uh, that's about where Beckham's relationship with the main character sort of ends. At least for the good guys, because unlike everybody else in the entire series, Beckham wasn't connected to every fucking person in the whole show. They are only connected to a couple of others. And the first one was another side character named Trixie, who I actually did an episode on before. She was sort of the bad guy side character. Her and Beckham were actually best friends. They hung out and did crimes together, and it was great. Well, that is until a certain somebody showed up. Yep, that's right, he's back. For those of you who watch this series, you know exactly who I'm talking about, Shadow. My edgiest character that I worked the hardest on for so many years. And because Shadow's a nosy bitch who can't go five seconds without making everything about himself, he was also in Beckham's story. You know, honestly, he should just start getting his own section in these goddamn videos. He's in every other fucking video, so why not give him a section? Anyway, he was also in Beckham's story because he was Trixie's on-again, off-again boyfriend, and he knew them. And let me tell you guys, Beckham fucking hated him. Now, I'm sure that comes as no surprise to any of you, considering that Shadow's only existence in the whole story is to ruin people's lives. And I'm sure that you're all wondering, how exactly did this edgy toothpick of a man ruin Beckham's life? Well, he didn't. Yeah, he actually never did anything to Beckham. He never got the chance because they fucking hated him right off the bat. Like, they could just tell he was a piece of shit by looking at him, and they just never engaged with him unless they absolutely had to. And even then, they'd just smack him in his fucking head or pull out their gun if he started getting suspicious or hitting on them, which he did quite often and failed at every single time. And all of this actually makes Beckham the only character in the whole fucking series who doesn't fall for Shadow's bullshit. You did it. Good job. So I can't believe it. I'm proud of you. I think the reason for that was because they never talked to him. Not only because they literally couldn't, but also because they don't tell anyone anything about their personal life. 
Their life outside of their work is very lock and key. Nobody gets to know anything. Not even Trixie, I don't think. At least she didn't know a whole lot. So Shadow had nothing to work with and nothing to manipulate. Also, another thing that probably worked was the fact that Beckham smoked cigarettes literally all the time. And Shadow's a little bitch who can't be around cigarette smoke or he starts to cough. You know, this giant evil bad guy I created for the series who tortures people and kills just everyone he comes across and abuses everybody mentally and physically. He can't handle a widow cigarette smoke or he starts coughing. You know, honestly, I feel like if more people in Code Red smoked regularly, Shadow probably would have been far less of an issue than he was. Cigarette smoke is basically evil bad guy repellent in my world. But even with all that said, Shadow and Beckham still had their moments together. I never wrote anything specific, sadly, other than I wanted them to be a couple, but I knew it couldn't work in canon, so I just I just drew this one thing. But uh, I always wanted to write episodes where Shadow, Trixie, and Beckham actually went on adventures doing crime and such. I mean, it was already implied in the series multiple times that they've done that kind of thing before, but I never wrote anything for present day, and I feel like that would have been a nice little filler or side episode if the series ever came to fruition. Now, there is one thing that I've left out up until this point, which I'm sure you're all wondering. How does Beckham's story end? Does the law eventually catch up with them? Does Shadow get pissed off that they keep rejecting him romantically and socially and just kill them? Does WPC ever do anything? Do they get killed while they're going on a mission? Nope, they die off screen. Yeah. This character who honestly wasn't that bad and had so much potential just fucking dies off screen between the original comic and the spin-off that I had planned, where the story follows all of the children from Code Red all grown up. Beckham's son is actually a main antagonist in that one, <coughs> and also Shadow's son's boyfriend. And their son took up the family business of being a dirty criminal hacker detective. And it's stated in the series that Beckham is dead by this point. Now how did they die, you're probably wondering. Were they killed? Did they die of natural causes? Did all those fucking cigarettes that they smoked give them lung cancer eventually? I don't know. They just kind of died. I, I never really wrote how, honestly. I, I just, Beckham was a character that showed up a few times and was really cool and was never utilized to their full potential. And then they just die off screen in a mysterious, not even mysterious, it's just like, yeah, Beckham's dead. Here's their son, you want to learn about that? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's their whole story. And uh, now we move on to the drawing. I actually didn't really want to change very much about Beckham's design. It actually isn't that bad. So I'm just doing what I did with Vincent's story and I'm just drawing them as they are. So yeah, if you guys like this drawing, you can go to the link in the description. It takes you directly to where it's posted on my Instagram. Speaking of that, I have an Instagram. I also have Twitter, if you care more about my ramblings than you do my art. I also have a Patreon, which I'm gonna shout out my patrons right now. Here's the $1 on screen. Look at them right there. Mwah. Here's the $5. You can see their art and links to all of their pages are also in the description. Mwah. And if you would like secret previews and you want your actual page or your social media or whatever you have to be put up on screen at the end of my videos, you can go directly to my Patreon, which is linked in the description. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. That's everything I have to plug. I've plugged my drawings and my social medias and whatnot. I hope you guys like this. This is actually really fun to record. I miss being on here. As much anxiety as YouTube gives me, I miss it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and thanks for supporting me. Don't forget to like, comment, definitely don't forget to subscribe and join the madness. See ya!